Uh, hello, my name is Tobias Bosse. I'm, I'm an editor for Deutsche Verkehrszeitung. Um, today I will uh, interview um, Kajure Bamunyu. Uh, um, she's a global head of operations for Kobo uh, 360, a uh, Nigerian based uh, e logistics platform. Um, thanks for taking the time and welcome to the program. Thank you, Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> Yeah, thanks for being here. Um, you will also attend the Innovation Day at the Kühne Logistics uh, University in, on the 4th of February, right? Yes, I am. Very nice. Uh, but um, also very nice that you take the time to take some questions from me um, uh, before that. Um, so I would, at first, I would like to um, have some um, in your own words, what uh, what is the services um, Cobo 360 uh, providing to its customers? Okay, uh, so Cobo 360 is an e-logistics platform um, that has a, a platform known as the Global Logistics Operating System that connects um, businesses uh, such as manufacturers, agribusinesses, uh, mining businesses, construction businesses that are looking for transporters and basically connects them with a pool of transporters. Uh, this would be different um, individual transporters, large scale transporters, and, and uses, using technology, create efficiencies, uh, reliability, um, and visibility. Uh, so that's what we do as Cobo 360. Uh, we are a pan-African company in terms of uh, being a, a operating in seven offices in the continent, but serving over 20 countries in Africa. And uh, we've identified um, a need for, for Cobo 360 services in the continent. Uh, one, because of the vast um, production or raw material production that happens in the continent and the need to move this, whether it's to ports, whether it's to different um, African countries that are doing manufacturing. And then the gap that exists in lack of um, visibility, being able to track the trucks um, in efficiency where you don't know just where the track is at what time and what cargo it's loading from a different country. So we use technology for that. And thirdly, we step in and provide financing to transporters, which allows them to fuel their trucks, which allows them to ensure that the trucks are always running without challenges on operating costs. And that's in a nutshell of who we are. And we use this data, um, again, to create the efficiencies, to be able to build products that fit into the markets that we currently operate in. Okay. Um, so uh, I've, I've read an article um, on uh, CNN uh, where they called uh, Cobo 360 like the, the Uber for, uh, for logistics. Um, you also worked previously, uh, previously um, for Uber. Um, how many Ubers uh, actually in, in Cobo 360? Uh, so wh what I would call uh, the, the reference that people drew to this is really um, the idea of using technology to really enter an industry that traditionally doesn't have. So we're both in transportation. So um, yes, I am an ex-Uber. Uh, person, uh, but I'm also um, an expert in transportation. It is what I study. I'm a transport engineer. Um, and so how many people? I think a, a couple of us from Uber in Sub-Saharan Africa uh, who really understand logistics um, and transportation in the continent um, were able to be drawn to the idea of Kobo because we understood how technology can really change um, logistics. A pivotal difference is that we work B2B, so we work with businesses, um, and it's not a B2C model. Mm -hmm. um, and a simple um, scale. scale is extremely important to us uh, because of the sheer volumes we see in the continent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, speaking speaking of uh, some figures, um, since the app took uh, off in 2017, it's um, almost three and a half years, I guess, um, how does the business develop in terms of um, trucks available on your on your platform, um, customers, connections that you've created um, with your platform? Um, and um, yeah, you, you, sp you spoke about uh, 20 countries um, is, a, is a service available right now. Um, and um, in terms of revenue also. Uh, so uh, as a company right now, we have over 50,000, you know, we've been able to work with over 50,000 trucks. Uh, 
we've been able to connect over a thousand uh, driver uh, customers and being able to load their cargo. Uh, so this is some of the things that's quite exciting in terms of what we have been able to do. Um, we look, we move, you know, thousands of metric tons on any given day uh, because of the varied kinds of cargo that are available in the continent. And so. Yes, uh, we are quite happy of being critical to what is happening in the continent in terms of logistics. Um, we're excited that uh, we, you know, we closed Series A and we were able to raise funding that supported our expansion um, from investors such as Goldman Sachs, um, IFC, um, TLcom. So a mixture of both African-focused and global investors. So this has enabled us to be able to really scale and you know do the numbers that you have mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, but can you tell me? Can, can you give me some some actual numbers um, where, um, concerning the the, the revenue uh, or the in percentage per, maybe that you um, scale uh, since the beginning in 2017? Um, uh, was there a, a percentage uh, increase um, in in the revenue over the last couple of years? Oh, so yes. Um, so if we look at just last year, which uh, was 2020, day of the pandemic, Uber was able to grow more than 250 percent. Um, uh, in this case, Kobo was able to grow more than 250 percent. And again, this is because of just the critical nature of the logistics sector. During mm -hmm. the pandemic, people had to eat, uh, things needed to get to where they needed to go. And so the importance of the logistics sector and Kobo came out critically because now there was a need to reduce movement of people and involve a reliance on technology. And so that's part of the numbers. So being able just in one year, grow to 50%. The years before, we actually grew at a higher percentage. Um, again, it, it um, over 500% the previous year to 50% this past year. And we're looking to even a bigger growth uh, in 2021 um, as we expand in multiple markets, but also as we continue to grow and serve the markets that we are in. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's um, that's a lot. So, uh, so you, um, there's a lot of potential, right? And uh, you, you speak enough. Um, but what what uh, what were the biggest challenges um, you faced in the in the past? And um, uh, besides uh, the COVID uh, crisis, but um, uh, maybe in terms of infrastructure, um, uh, um, for, uh, in roads or uh, also in in um, the technical part, um, like the networking. Um. So um, you, you've alluded to some of these challenges. Yes, indeed they are. Um, so the first one is bad infrastructure remains a challenge. Um, sometimes cargo just takes quite a long time to move to where it needs to get to because of poor road or congestion in the road. So take an example, the port of Apapa. We quite face a lot of congestion problems there. So congestion and poor infrastructure has been a problem. The second thing is that we had to find ways to adapt to the app to the different local settings. Africa is one big continent, but then multiple languages, multiple cultures and ways of doing business. And so adapting to the tech to the different markets um, in such a way that the driver is able to easily use uh, the technology. Thinking outside the box, in areas where there's poor mobile network connection, what is it that you do? What are some of the substitutes that you can work with to continue offering a superior service, even when there are challenges on the ground? So these are some of the things that we are the realities of operating in Africa. And I think a fourth one is uh, border delays. Um, that has been a huge problem um, in the continent. Um, so that's why Kobo is quite excited about the continental, Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement that actually is being operationalized this year. Uh, it will be quite refreshing, but also cost effective to not have cargo waiting a day, two days, a week, just along the borders as it gets cleared. So these are some of the challenges. And the good thing is that we are working with governments. I think there's a recognition from governments of the need to solve some of these problems. So they, they want to do their job as well, then, <laughs> to make yours yes. easier. Yeah. Um, Trade has been recognized as quite an important part. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but um, coming coming back to the to the obvious um, topic, uh, it's, it's COVID crisis still. Um, how does it affect your your business um, in, in in the last year and maybe still um, is? 
So last year, um, so when COVID hit, uh, what we saw was um, that all of a sudden the certain industries actually came to a halt. Um, so, you know, industries that people were trying to gauge um, is, for example, cement an essential service or not. And so certain industries are actually slowed down. And then businesses in the agro business, actually, we saw a huge increase in volumes in terms of FNCG and food. Um, so we were able to adapt to some of these changes and dynamics in the, in the sector. Um, the second thing was that tech became all of a sudden very important. Um, so the time would take and the effort it would take to convince customers that, you know, we would like you to accept a digital invoice. Um, uh, we don't have to do physical delivery of papers, et cetera. Actually, it mm -hmm. became such an easier conversation because, again, people were social distancing, certain you know, areas were, quite, were closed. Thirdly was that Africa does depend a lot on imports from China. So we did see quite a sharp decrease um, of cargo, um, especially containerized cargo that was coming from China. And so we did have a slowdown in some of the months. Um, um, and then fourth, as the countries were trying to figure out what to do in terms of testing before you move from country A to country B, we did see huge, huge delays along the borders. And so luckily governments have been able to work together and so this has moved down almost to pre-COVID. The delays have moved down almost to pre-COVID times. So a bit of adjustment. So uh, what we see in 2021 is that um, I think there's been better um, uptake of technology. Um, there's a, been a bit of adaptation that has taken place. Of course, mm -hmm. it remains quite comfortable for all of us, uh, but we've been able to adapt the technology and how we offer our services to really fit into um, what the challenge that we're experiencing, which in this case is COVID-19, yeah. Okay. Um, do you um, might see that some of these adjustments, these, these shifts in, in, in sourcing um, will be permanent so that um, uh, some of the, the industry will be sourcing uh, more regional or more in, in other parts of, of the world, um, like to, to be not so um, dependent from, from China so what we anticipate and some of our customers have shared with us is a need of diversification. So our customers are talking about diversifying where they source goods, as an example, especially the materials that they use. Um, so this is some of the con conversations that we are participating in. And so we're likely to see some industries actually diversify um, to not have just a single source. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, as you already mentioned, uh, you, you uh, have raised um, uh, around uh, 35 million from um, external investors like uh, Goldman Sachs. Um, and um, when, you, when you say you will uh, scale your business further to, to other countries, um, are you looking for further uh, investments in, in the near future? Uh, yes, so we are always open uh, to investors, um, especially those who are aligned with our mission. Um, we d indeed are looking to further expansion, whether in Africa or beyond. Um, so continuously growing, uh, we're looking also you know, to further build our tech, improve our tech, to serve even more customers and even more transporters. So definitely, that's something that we are always open to. Okay. Uh, which markets will be the next that you expand in? Um... I so I'll, I will be sharing that as we release that information, but uh, be sure to look out to that. We will definitely be having some, okay. some interesting markets that we'll be launching in. Okay. So I will be the first one you tell it, right? Um, for <laughs> give me the information first. Then. <laughs> we'll be one of the people to know. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so let, one last question um, um, in, in terms of uh, regarding the, the, your goals for, for growth in, in 2021, um, can you give me a, a number or for the next three years maybe? Uh, so it, it, the number we would be talking about, so a part of our target is really to be a significant player in terms of um, uh, the the percentage which we serve. So our goal, we always say internally, is that we would like to do 50, we would like to move 50% of the cargo that moves in Africa. Um, okay. So that's tremendous volume when you think about it. Um, 
from the potential, the the rapid growth that we're seeing in industries, but also in the existing business that is there. Yeah. Okay. So um, best of luck for that, and um, thanks again very much for for taking the time to um, for the interview and. Um, yeah, maybe we see uh, see you again on the uh, Innovation Day um, at the Kalu. Okay, thank you so much.